Our camp report is brought to you by America's Navy. Yeah, the big news coming out of the U.S. women's national team is Vlatko Andonovsky resigning as the coach following their last 16 World Cup exit. Let's get word now from our team who've been out on the ground in Australia and New Zealand for the World Cup in Alexis Nunes and Mark Ogden. Alexis, you get the feeling that this was inevitable. Yeah, Kay, honestly, it's an unfortunate situation, but it just had to happen because you can't lead the U.S. Women's National Team to their earliest exit ever from a World Cup and expect to say, and I say it, unfortunate because from what I saw hanging out with the U.S. Women's National Team and Vladko for the entire tournament, um, they seemed to get on with him. You know, he seemed like a very likable guy. The staff also enjoyed working with him. But again, in the last four years, you look at what he's accomplished with what has been such a talented group of players, both youthful players and then, of course, the veterans like Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan. And it doesn't really make for pretty reading. There's a bronze medal at the Olympics, which when we're talking about the USA, bronze just does not cut it. There's a She Believes Cups, the CONCACAF Women's Championship, which you do expect the USA to boss anyway. But it had to be done because I think, Augie, one of the things that they've been talking about and he's been heavily criticized about at this World Cup was just not getting his tactic right, not ready or not able to mix it up when he needed to, but also not knowing what the USA's best starting 11 was. You know, I think he probably, he walked into a perfect storm when he got the job, you know, he succeeded Jill Ellis, a kind of legendary figure. He inherited a team that was ageing, and it had mm -hmm. it, so it had a, a group of players that were ageing and a group of talented young players that weren't quite ready. And the rest of the world is catching up at the same time, so you've got all these things coming together. And I think the World Cup has been a situation where it has all come together, and it's been a bit of a shock, and the US hasn't realised that since 2019 the rest of the world has caught up. And I think, you know, Black Coast kind of selections and his tactics, it was almost like he was kind of rabbit in the headlights a little bit because mm. the playing as teams that can now beat the US. In the past, these teams would just let the US beat them. You see it in so many sports that when a top team comes to the end, it happens really quickly. And that's happened this time with the US. I think it gave me a lot of, or it reminded me a lot of David Moyes' situation at Manchester United, just kind of out of your depth a little bit, obviously with most respect to Vladko. But, you know, he had, had some NWSL experience, you know, with Kansas City. He, he won two titles there. But this step up to the USA, because losing with FC Kansas City and then losing with the United States women's national team are two very different eyes and two very different feelings of pressure on you. Well, I mean, that, that is a really good kind of analogy because Thank David, you. David Moyes, Black Coat, <laughs> they're walking into a dressing room of players that have won everything. Yeah. And they're looking at the manager saying, come on, how are you going to make us better? Mm -hmm. And really, that, that manager or coach can't make them better. He has to almost let the egos out of control. And he, but he can't do that either. So that's what I said about a perfect storm. I don't think there was a way he could have gone in there and asserted his personality and his demands because the senior players would have been like, well, that didn't work last time and we won the World Cup twice. So he was never really going to succeed, which is why I think whenever the next coach comes in, whoever it is, quite a few of the old guy will have moved on. Mm. It'll be an easier dressing room to manage because the younger players will not have that same bedrock of experience and it's been set in the ways, basically. So I, I think it's a good time for the US to start again. Yeah, that's something that I think Ali Krieger said on our show that she needed, or the team just needs a fresh start. And it's no doubt, Kay, that they do have that talent there. Obviously, they're going to have to say goodbye to a couple of big-name players like Julie Ertz and Megan Rapinoe, who are, you know, in the sunset part of their career. But um, when you see this U.S. women's national team, much like how we were talking about Manchester United, everybody wants a big name to trust in. Um, could that big name be a certain Serena Vigman? Everybody loves some Serena Vigman, but of course she's heavily involved with the Lionesses, and rightfully so. She's led them into this World Cup final. Um, the FA had a little thing to say about that, and they basically said, heck no. Yeah, so I was up in Terrigal yesterday at the England camp, and I was speaking to Mark Bullingham, the, the CEO, and he was 100% no, can't go. Now, I think they don't know that for definite, because Vigman mm. might want... If, if Vigman wins the, the World Cup on Sunday, she may feel that she's done everything with England, but... One thing is, is worth stressing is that her contract runs until 2025. When the FA hired her from her last job with the Dutch team, she refused to walk out at the end of the contract. They had to wait until her contract finished because she wants to honour her contract. So if she's going to honour her contract with the FA in England, that's 2025. And can the US wait two years? Probably not. So they would have to persuade Serena Wiegmann to change her philosophy of not walking out of contract. So it's possible, but I think 
England are very confident that they can keep her and make and keep her happy, pay what she wants. So it's going to be a really tough call for the US. But the US are the biggest draw in women's football. You can't you can't escape that. And I mean, once you've won at Euros and then a year later you win a World Cup, that's the ultimate mic drop. I would say, what more do you want yeah. from me, really and truly? But someone else linked with the US too, naturally, because of his previous links with the US, is Tony Gustafsson. We've seen what he's done with the Matildas. It would be a shame for him to leave them, considering we feel and we've seen and we've lived what the Matildas has done to, to wake up this country. But back to the USA, Tony Gustafsson, but this time in the lead role? I think that's a much better fit, to be honest. Mm. I, I just think Australia is a great sporting nation, but the Matildas are the US national team. And I think, well, <laughs> right. they're not. I, I just think that they're not. And I think it's a great step up for him. And I think, he, again, he would, he would have that kind of the credentials with the, the remaining senior players and also be able to persuade the younger players that he's a guy. So I think he's taken Australia probably beyond the expectations to the semi-finals. So I think he's a much better fit than Serena Wiegmann in terms of being able to get them to do the job. I, th I think Wiegmann is the she's the Pep Guardiola of, of women's coaching. She really is. But getting him, getting her out of that contract is going to be really difficult. Well, the other conversation that I think we ignited the other day, Kay, a um, bit of a controversial one now. It's kind of got massive legs. That's Serena Wiegmann. If she doesn't say go to the USA, how about her coaching? England, but as in the three Lions, when Gareth Southgate, who we feel eventually is coming to his time um, at, at, with the three Lions. So what do you think about this? And what did the FA exactly suggest, Augie? Well, we asked the question, you know, would you consider Serena to replace Gareth Southgate? And the, and the answer was, we want the best person for the job, not the best man or the best Englishman, the best person. And Mark Bullingham said that, you know, he actually said Serena Vivian could do whatever she wants in football. And if, mm. if she wanted to move into the men's game, it's something they would consider. Now, why not? Yeah. You know, I think the situation is that it's, it, it couldn't be a tokenistic appointment. Serena Vigman has proved her credentials. She hasn't won the World Cup yet. If she does win the World Cup, World Cup win, Euros win. She's very smart tactically. She's, a, she's obviously a good manager of people and players all those credentials that you need and what Mark Bullingham also said was if you look around right now for the list of candidates to potentially succeed Gareth Southgate there's not a great list of candidates I mean let, let's look at who it would be Graham Potter a fairly on his CV Eddie Howe why would he leave Newcastle then you look at Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard now are they better qualified than Serena Vigo to manage England probably because they played but that doesn't matter in coaching and let's be honest the UK had three female prime ministers yeah and that's a bigger <laughs> job than managing the England football team so why not <laughs> Why not, Kay? We absolutely love that. I mean, Serena Vigman, as we said, she's just highly, highly respected, I think, overall. And what I thought she's brought to this Lionesses team is just give them that winning mentality, that ruthlessness that we've wanted to see. And now it's got them into back-to-back. -back. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.